Let us bow our heads in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today is known as the baptism of our Lord. And every year on this first Sunday after Epiphany, we make a drastic jump from Jesus as a small baby to Jesus, the 30-year-old man, about to begin his public ministry. And so, from last week, 30 years have passed from the visit of the wise men. And the gospel focuses on Jesus as an adult. And our reading in the gospel of Luke gives us Luke's version of the baptism of Jesus. Now, it's always helpful not to try and compare the stories in the Gospels, especially when it's told in all four Gospels. The other three Gospel writers each provide their own story, emphasizing the different elements that would have been significant to the communities for which they were writing to. And so Luke's account of the baptism of Jesus focuses on other elements. He points to a major theme, but also he looks at the epiphany as well. But what Luke Luke focuses on is what happens when what is revealed is not what people actually want or what people expected, and they later reject it. We know that when Jesus was born, it was a time when people really needed a savior. They waited long for a Messiah to redeem them. And we know from last week's sermon that what the king did, as he heard that a new king or a new baby was born who was to be king, the king was threatened and ordered that children two years and younger be killed. Now you can imagine What kind of chaos was in that time? And Jesus was born in this time. But we also know that for 400 years, Israel had not seen a prophet. And so when John burst into the scene, the people were excited. Obviously, John was a great prophet. He spoke well. He attracted a lot of followers. And he spoke just like the old prophets who urged people to repent and turn away from their sin and seek their way back to God. And so, people were eagerly awaiting the promised Messiah. In fact, we read in the gospel that there were those who thought that John himself was the Messiah. Although he answered them, I am not the Messiah. The one who comes after me, I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals, but he will come and baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now, the River Jordan, where John was baptizing, was a symbol of new beginnings for the people of Israel. You will recall in the Old Testament that they had crossed the Jordan River to start a new life into the promised land. And so John brought them back here to be baptized as a symbol of this new life that they would begin, a new life that would be within. Now, what can we learn from this event, from the baptism of Christ? Firstly, the baptism of Christ reveals to us the nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so John goes around preaching the message of repentance and urging people to be baptized, to turn away from their old lifestyles and take on this new life. And John is baptizing the people with water. But he's also letting them know and clearly making them understand that he's not the Messiah, that he doesn't have the saving power within him that there will be one who will come after him. And we know that the someone that John is talking about is our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Jesus wouldn't just be baptizing with water, but Jesus comes also to plunge us into a fiery baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now you see, if you speak to people who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, they will tell you that something happens in them. And it's almost as if you have no control of what's happening, but you also experience this deep sense of joy because you know that it is God who is touching you. And so once we are filled with the Holy Spirit, our lives change, no matter what our past looks like. John is making it clear to his followers that when Jesus comes, he comes to make us whole, to transform their lives and make them that that God wants. And so as John was busy baptizing people, Jesus shows up. Now Luke doesn't give all the details of how Jesus showed up or what happened. He simply tells us that when everyone was being baptized into the river, Jesus was also baptized. He gives no further explanations. It's almost as if that was the most obvious thing ever. Now Luke plainly states why people were coming to be baptized. And when we read earlier in chapter 3, verse 3, Luke clearly states that people were being baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and their lives and wanted to give God or, or wanted to give their lives over to God to God for God to forgive their sins. That's the reason people were being baptized. And so many Christians often struggle with the fact that Jesus allows himself to be baptized by John. After all, we are told that this baptism was for sinners. So then why did Jesus allow this to happen to him? Why didn't Jesus simply go to Jerusalem and identify himself with well-established religious leaders? Because he is the son of God, isn't it? So why doesn't Jesus go straight to Jerusalem and becomes one of the high priests? Why does the long-awaited Messiah, who comes to save his people, choose to go to a river and identify himself with sinners? When we read 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, Paul tells us, or he calls Jesus the one who did not know sin. And in Hebrews 4, 15, he famously says that Jesus was tempted in every way that we are, except without sin. And so what use would a sinless person have for baptism? But here's what makes sense to me, my brothers and sisters. If Jesus came to show us how to live, how to love, and even how to die well, then baptism is part of it. You see, baptism is part of life. And Jesus lives it out for us and shows us how we can receive redemption, how we can be forgiven through baptism. Because you see, Jesus is both God and human. He underwent baptism and even death only as a human being could. And so God through Jesus chose to come and identify with us. You see, in order for Jesus to be able to save us, he needed to identify with us. He needed to go through what we go through on a daily basis. He needed to understand what it is that we go through. So that means that whenever we go through difficulties, we can be assured that Jesus understands what we go through. Whenever our lives are not as it should be, we can have the assurance that our Lord Jesus Christ goes through all the circumstances with us. And it all began at the baptism of our Lord. And so Jesus comes to identify with us so that through him we may seek our way back to God. 
The baptism of our Lord has a lot to show us about our own baptism. For example, Luke tells us that when everybody was being baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And so he did not wait for people to be baptized and then come alone in secrecy to be baptized by John. This happened while everyone was being baptized. Jesus was baptized as a person among other people. It shows us that while baptism is personal, it's never private. Jesus was baptized in public with other people watching him, with other sinners who came to seek repentance. And so baptism is a community event. It's not just between us and God, but baptism makes us part of each other. It builds a community of believers. It's about a shared relationship with our God. And so the Gospel of Luke reveals and puts emphasis on Jesus in his human nature, born to humble parents, a birth announced to shepherds and foreigners. But secondly, we also learn that the baptism of Christ shows God's approval on those who are obedient to him. You see, God saw to it that the ministry of Jesus began well. And he saw to it that Jesus would be baptized by John. In verse 21, after being baptized, Luke tells us that Jesus begins to pray. And as he was praying, we are told that heaven was opened. And in verse 22, Luke says that the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven and said, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And I'm reminded again from our first reading in Isaiah today, which says, I have called you by name. You are mine. And so Jesus, as true man and true God, received approval from God. And in that approval, he was strengthened by the Holy Spirit through baptism. And this happens because God had faith in Jesus Christ. God knew that through his son, all mankind would have a way back to him. That God would be reunited with his people. God knew that Jesus would fulfill his will here on earth. And so Jesus as true man and true God was strengthened by the Holy Spirit because he came to see to our salvation through to the bitter end. You see, when we are obedient to God, when we live by God's ways, God gives us his approval. God looks at us and feels that we deserve to be strengthened through the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus being baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit leaves the gentle waters of the river Jordan and goes toe-to-toe with the devil and resists temptations for three years. You see, when Jesus lived here on earth, he left all his glory behind in heaven. In fact, Paul tells us that he, was, he became humble as a servant. And so while he lived with, with people, he was fully, fully man, just like you and I. And because Jesus was obedient, the voice of God gave approval at his baptism. Because as son, he had pleased his father from the beginning. And so when it came time for Jesus to die on the cross for us, the ultimate sacrifice was pleasing to God. The baptism of Jesus is really the starting line of Jesus' three-year dash to the cross. In the end, sin, death, and the devil would be overcome by his victory on the cross. 
You see, righteousness and perfection is fulfilled by Jesus for us and nothing else. It's not by works. It's not by what we know. It's not by who we know. But it's about Christ living in us. Sin can only be removed in our lives through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so Jesus in his baptism, through his life, God began what he would finish three years later on the cross with his proclamation, it is finished. You see, those weren't words of giving up, but it was words of victory when Jesus said, what you have sent me to do, Lord, is finished, it's complete. Salvation has come for all and we don't need to pay for it. We just need to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and make him Lord of our lives. Make him our king. You see, when it comes to Jesus working out salvation, the proverb isn't well begun is half done, but rather well begun and completely done. God never starts what he cannot finish. And so we can be assured that whatever God starts in our lives or whatever God reveals to us or whatever God puts in our lives will be complete in him. You see, when God is pleased with us, when God is pleased with our living, then we receive approval. And so today as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ by John the Baptist, as we see how Jesus submits to the baptism of sinners, even though he was without sin, we see that he identified with us. The sinless God identifies himself as a sinner. And therefore, he actively fulfills the law of God and receives God's grace on our behalf for all sinners through his baptism. Jesus is anointed and set apart as the Lamb of God. God reveals him to all who were baptized. And people saw that he is the Son of God. People experienced all the miracles. And many, many years later, more than 2,000 years later, we can still see people being saved daily because of what Jesus did. And so, friends, as we look at Jesus, who was baptized for us, we remember our own baptism. And yes, Jesus identified with us in baptism. That means that in our baptism, we identify with him. In our baptism, we are called to follow Christ and also serve others as he did. And now I'm convinced that what was true for Jesus at his baptism is also true for us today. God says to us each at our baptism, you are my child whom I dearly love. In our baptism, God gives us a new identity. God names us and claims us for his own purpose. God says to us, I have called you by name. You are mine. You too are beloved. It doesn't matter what the world says about us. It doesn't matter even if people don't believe in us. But the true God who created heaven and earth believes in you and me. Amen.